Hi there, thanks for being with me today. I'm going to be talking about the sclera today and some of the key markers we see in the sclera. This will be a 30,000 foot overview of the sclera. And if you like this video, I'm inviting you to like it, leave a comment and share it. Thanks so much. Hey there and welcome. It is so good to have you with me today. Um, my voice is already feeling a little bit tired for some reason this morning, so I hope it holds out for this because I have another two hours of teaching after this and then a client, so it could be an interesting day. So good to have you with me today. Um, and today we are going to be talking about sclerology. And so just as we're getting ready to do that, I would love it if you would take just a moment and hit the chat box and let me know where you are. Where are you from? I know, I know a few of the people that are with us today and I know where they're from, but I want to see all of you. I want to see where you are from. Let's get the comments going so that you know how to use that chat box so we can have a bit of interaction. So we've got Niagara on the Lake. Beautiful. I've been to Niagara on the Lake. Beautiful place. Brooks, Alberta. Been there too. Barcelona, Spain. Want to go there. <laughs> Where else is everyone from? We've got London, UK. Been there. That's great. Love it. Anybody else from some, somewhere else? Anywhere else? Thank you. Uh, Binghamton, New York. Fantastic. Love it. Fantastic. Well, welcome. I'm glad you are with me today. So grab your cup of herb tea, grab your pen and paper, and let's get going. Because, you know, uh, you know, one more thing that I want to know from you, do you have iridology training already? If you do, if you've actually taken a course, not just dabbled around on the internet, but if you've actually taken a course, give me a yes in the comments box. That's going to let me know how deep I can go today, right? If I've got a lot of people who are pretty new, then I'm going to keep this very, very surface level for you. So we've got um, Peggy, who's actually a graduate from my program. Always good to see you, Peggy. And Tammy, who has TCM. Fantastic. Love that. This works so well with um, uh, iridology and sclerology works so well with herbology. It's just a beautiful, beautiful combination. And we've got a short course. We've got Tina, who's, uh, who is a herbologist. Brilliant, brilliant. Love this. So good. And if anyone else wants to weigh in, please do. Nutritionist, fantastic. Now, as we're, we're going to dive right in now, because as we're doing iridology, we're always looking for ways to assess our clients' health so we can create more effective programs for them without spending more time, right? Neither you nor your clients wants the assessment and recommendation to pr process to take weeks, days, or even hours. Do you agree with me on with that, that your client wants to get answers when they're with you in the appointment? They don't want to wait for things. If you agree with that, give me a yes in the comments box. That you agree that your clients typically want some kind of an answer while they're with you. Yeah, they do, don't they? They want information. They don't want to be sent off. I'll get back to you on that. And so they want information now. Making, uh, when you can give your clients feedback in an appointment, so they come in, you start working with them, you give them feedback, you give them direction right now, it's the most powerful because that is when they are the most motivated. That is when they are ready to take action. So if you make them wait for, um, while you pour over a five or a 10 page intake questionnaire, while you put together recommendations, it gives them time to cool off and it gives them time to lose their direction, which means they're not going to be as motivated to follow through with your recommendations. You might currently be creating your protocols based on symptoms lists. I know that's really common with functional nutrition and functional medicine, but, but how do you actually isolate the root of the problem? Really with a symptoms list, you're just figuring out their symptoms. You have to be able to figure out what the root of the problem is. How will you get lasting results if you're only ever working on symptoms? Does that question make sense? 
if you're only working on symptoms, are you ever going to get really solid lasting results? Or are you going to be constantly addressing symptoms? Maybe you run, Tammy says, no, that's a Band-Aid solution. Yeah, Tammy, thank you, you got it. That's exactly what I was hoping someone would say. Well done. You might run IgG tests or IgE tests. There's challenges with those tests too. You can have false positives, you can have false negatives, and they only really confirm that your client has symptoms. They don't confirm why your client has symptoms. So your client reacts to certain foods. Why are they reacting to certain foods? What is it in their body chemistry that is leading to that? So the beautiful thing about iridology and sclerology is that we can take those symptoms, layer that on top of what we see in the eyes, ask more questions, and get to the root of the problem. And we don't have to wait for lab tests to come back. We can, we can run labs if we're licensed to do that or if we have access to alternative labs that can do that. We can run labs and when those labs come back, it will help confirm what we're already doing. But we really don't actually need the labs. We've become very numbers dependent, haven't we? Wanting to see um, you know, where numbers are on those food reaction tables or wanting to see just all kinds of numbers as if the numbers give us the answer. And they don't. They just tell us the degree of the symptom. So knowing how to use sclerology and iridology can reduce your assessment time and your program creation time. So you can actually get things done while you're with your client. And because you're getting it done while you're with your client, while your client is really motivated, your client is much more likely to follow through. Right. Now, that's not to say that when we do an iris assessment, we are going to and pardon the graphicness of this. We're not going to vomit everything all over our client in one session. We need as we do the assessment, we're going to choose what the root is and start building from there. Because truly, in order to help our clients attain really awesome health and energy, it takes more than one or two changes, right? It takes a lot of changes, and that's more changes than we ever want to recommend in one sitting. We want to build that program with them step by step and lead them along the path, hold their hand, walk that path with them to make sure they are accountable so they get the results we've said they will get so we can keep building, getting results, building getting results until we've got, until the client is where they are, where they want to be with their health. Does that make sense that this is not an instant process? If that makes sense, give me a makes sense in the comments box. Thank you so much. I love this, that you're, you're, um, that you're playing with me in the chat box. That is just brilliant. It helps to fuel my energy and it means you're gonna get more out of me. The more you play with me in, that, in the chat box, the more you'll get. Now we need to remember that both iridology and sclerology are not diagnostic tools. <gasps> Some of you who are new to iridology have, have thought it was a diagnostic tool, but remember diagnosis means to name a disease. We don't ever get to do that with iridology. Iridology and sclerology are both assessment tools. We are not going to be naming diseases here. We know that the iris shows us genetic potential. So where the strengths and weaknesses are, which organs want to negatively impact other organs. And the sclera is very dynamic. It shows us where the body is struggling right now. Sometimes the sclera can tell us how the body is struggling or why the body is struggling but it's not necessarily going to give us the what we need to do about it. That's where other training that we've got comes in. It might sound like if the, the sclera can tell us that this body is fighting a virus or is fighting bacteria or is likely fighting a yeast, that that's all we need to know to create a program and to create a direction for this, but it's not true. We need to dig deeper. We're going to need to look at the, at the uh, iris itself. So balancing what we see in the sclera, virus, bacteria, things like that, um, or other things that we see. We see a lot of things in the sclera. Balancing that with what we see in the iris, those genetic potentials, and with the symptoms 
is what's going to help us get to the root of the problem. We always want to have at least two indicators pointing to one potential problem before we call it a problem, right? And so those indicators can be things we see in the eyes that are corroborating a story, or it can be, we can add symptoms that the client has had. We can even add other things that the client has tried that have not worked or that have worked. Those can be layers of the story that help us to understand what the problem is and what we want to do with it. What we need to understand is that as a general rule, if we're working with an active symptom, we almost always want to see something showing up in the sclera. Because again, the sclera shows us what's going on right now. It shows us where the hot spots are right now. And it can show those things to us even before they are a clinical symptom. So we might see a marking in the sclera and we're going, oh, that suggests problem X, Y, Z, but the client doesn't have symptoms yet because what we're seeing in the sclera can be a problem that is just brewing, hasn't come to a head yet. So sclerology and iridology both take more than a mini class like this to learn. So today we're going to, like I said, keep this very high level. We're going to, I'm going to give you some real life application that's appropriate for health professionals to help you understand how sclerology works. Now, truly, when we dovetail iridology for the genetic side and sclerology for the dynamic side, we do get a fairly clear picture of what is going on and in what order we should be addressing the problem. Does that sound powerful to you? If you could understand what was going on and figure out what the root of the problem is to know where to start and what steps would come next, would that be amazing. If that would be amazing, give me amazing in the comments box. So Tina, again, clarifying the iris is genetic, the sclera is dynamic. And everyone is saying that would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Woohoo. Well done. All righty. So fact of the matter is, that iridology and sclerology are both learnable skills. But the truth of any skill is the more you practice it, the better you get. And the more feedback and mentoring and coaching you get on using that skill, the faster you get at knowing how to do this. Does that make sense? That the fastest way to learn something really well at a level where you can actually use it clinically is to have someone who will not just teach you the facts, but guide you through the process and teach you how to think through something. Does that sound like the very best way to learn something? Because I'm going to tell you, yeah, it is, right? And it's absolutely true with iridology and sclerology as well. With the best training, you'll understand how to integrate what you already know about nutrition or herbology. And we've got nutritionists and we've got herbalists in the group today. You'll understand how to integrate that information with what you see in the eyes. Maybe you've got aromatherapy or maybe you've got flower essences or some other modalities under your belt. When you understand how the eyes work, what information they give us, it helps you to understand how to integrate the other modalities that you already have. And that's exactly what I do in the dynamic iridology program. I teach you iridology and sclerology, but we also work on integrating what you already know. So and we do that with hundreds of cases and so many um, interactive sessions where I'm asking you to give me information so I can see how you're doing with it. Is it making sense? I want to develop your confidence. And in that process, if you're a herbalist and we're working through a case, I'm going to ask you to give me herbal answers. What would you do in this situation? If you're an aromatherapist, I want aromatherapy answers. If you're a nutritionist, I want nutrition answers. Because it does no good to learn how to you how, how to do iridology, how to recognize markers in the iris or in the sclera with sclerology if you don't know how to integrate them in clinical practice, right? That's where the power is learning how to integrate things into clinical practice. So some of what you're going to look at today, you may already know from other training, especially if you're a nurse or a massage therapist or an ND or an MD or a PT, 
And that foundation will serve you well in your study of iridology and sclerology. Alrighty, are you ready to look at some eyes? If you are, give me eyes in the comment box. You're ready to look at some eyes. Eyes, well, I love that enthusiasm. Yes, love it. Fantastic. Let's look at some eyes. And so love this. Fantastic. You are an amazingly responsive group. Thank you for that. That just fuels me. I don't know if you can see my energy going up with this as you're interacting with me. Holy doodle. I'm feeling like I'm on fire. I hope you're feeling that enthusiasm. And I'm, uh, let's give you some information now. So when we do an iris assessment, we look at the iris of the eye. That's our first thing. This is showing us genetic potentials. It's showing us where strengths and weaknesses are. And of course, you already understand if you've got constitutional iridology training under your belt, that the iris doesn't, we're not gonna clear, for example, this white out of the eye with a cleanse or a fast, right? The iris doesn't give markers up. It doesn't dissolve markers, but it will accumulate more pigments often as a person gets older. Now, we also then want to be looking at the sclera, the white of the eye. The white of the eye gives us different information. Again, the iris is genetic. This is inherent. This is what has been passed down through the generations. The sclera is what this person is doing with that right now. The iris um, is where we always start. And the sclera is how we build the story. We also need to remember that the pupils give us some very interesting information as well. Their size, their shape, things like that. We don't have time to dive into that today, but that is something we cover in the Dynamic Iridology Assessment System program. So today we're going to focus on the sclera because this is where we see dynamic changes. Now, you already know that the sclera changes dynamically. right? I want you to think about this. If you've ever had a really ugly cry, right, and you then you've excused yourself from the situation, you've gone into the washroom, you've looked at your face and you, your eyes are puffy and your eyes are bloodshot. You go, oh man, I can't go back out there, right? But you take a minute, you splash some cool water on your face and you get the puffiness down a bit. Give yourself a minute, you do some deep breathing, you kind of just calm down. And very rapidly, the bloodshottedness is that a word? It is now. From your eyes begins to settle. Those blood vessels calm down. So we know that the, the blood vessels in the eye are very, very dynamic. They tell us what's going on in the body right now. In the dynamic iridology assessment system, we learn 12 of the most important and common sclera markers what they teach us about the client's current health challenges and how to assess those markers in conjunction with the iris markers. Today, we're only gonna take a high level look at three of the markers that we see. All right, you ready for those three markers? Give me the number three in the chat box if you're ready to learn three sclera markers. Some of you people are just lightning fingers today, way to go, that's fantastic. The first one we're going to look at is jaundice. Now, you already know this if you've got any medical training. So jaundice is when we see a yellow haze in the iris of the eye, or, sorry, in the sclera, in the sclera of the eye. So again, we're looking at the sclera. So if we see yellow in the sclera, this is something medical personnel are trained to watch for. And depending on your device screen that you're, you're with me today on, this can be a little hard to see. I've got one computer where this yellow doesn't show up hardly at all. And it's just because of the color resolution settings on that monitor. And I don't know how to change them. What this tells us, this is why it's so important to have anatomy and physiology under your belt. What this tells us is the body is not, the liver specifically, is not conjugating bilirubin properly. Bilirubin is a byproduct of the breakdown of red blood cells, right? You knew that. And when we see this yellow building up in the white of the eye, it says the liver's not breaking that bilirubin down properly for the body to excrete it all the way. Now, that suggests that there is an imbalance in the liver enzymes. And that can be a part of a much bigger problem, right? It can be actually a part of many different 
bigger problems. So when we see jaundice in an eye, we need to find ways to very gently and very delicately ask questions to find out if our client knows about their liver health. It's always wise when your client comes in with a specific health concern and you see markers that make you want to go a different direction to be very gentle about how you ask those questions. I mean, I would never say to a client like this, wow, your eyes are jaundiced. You've obviously got a liver enzyme issue. They don't know what that means, but I can guarantee you that's going to spike their fear levels. So I'm going to find another way to ask this. And I don't know, you know, I, I, I'm pretty good at thinking of questions on the spot when I'm with the client, not always in a teaching situation. So you might want to ask if they've ever been, uh, if they know anything about their liver, have they ever been diagnosed with something that would lead to jaundice? Um, maybe if they've brought in a list of medications they're working with, that their doctor has prescribed, maybe that'll give you a clue. If they're on heart medications, chances are one of those is stressing the liver and leading to this, right? So you need to be able to track things back a little bit. You need to be able to sort out, is this relatively benign, like maybe an inherent genetic situation where they're just lacking an enzyme and it's not an indication of liver damage or damage anywhere else in the body? Or could, and is that something that could be supported with herbs or with lifestyle? Or is it potentially more serious? This is an, a brilliant example of why you need to have a college level anatomy and physiology course under your belt before you learn iridology. Because if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to assess your client at a deeper level. You're not going to understand what questions you need to ask. You're not going to understand what you're seeing. Now, jaundice suggests something current with the liver. Now, when we look at this eye, do you see this fiber that's running off sideways down here? If you see that, give me sideways in the comments box. See this one coming right down here. Fantastic, you see that. This starts out in the liver reaction field. And so that is telling us that this person is genetically predisposed to something wonky with the liver. So when we combine the sclera and the iris, and we see we've got two things saying liver, one that is very current and one that is genetic, we want to ask questions. We can't diagnose, but we need to now understand this this client's diet and lifestyle and their health history at a much deeper level. So the story behind this is this is an older fellow, he's in his late sixties and he doesn't drink alcohol. He takes nutritional supplements. He's not on any medications, which is nothing short of a miracle where I live. And he's worked a lot in chemically toxic environments. And while all of those things are not going to change his iris, they will tell us or they will put different kinds of stressors perhaps on his liver. And so I suspect that it's his years of working in a chemically toxic environment that is a part of what has, is stressing his liver and his body. He is, still works. Um, and so it's a challenge for his liver. So if his concern was that he had noticed his eyeballs becoming yellow, then it's really easy to address that directly and give dietary advice and suggest that he get some time in the sunshine. Sunshine is one of the best ways to help the body, to help the liver conjugate bilirubin. Uh, we might suggest that he also maybe should see his doctor and get some labs done just so we can rule out any other kind of organ damage. But we can at least start with some liver support. So until, we, until he gets his medical labs back, we want to make sure he's drinking enough water. Hydration is really important when we're looking at conjugating bilirubin. We want to make sure he's getting sunshine. Again, one of the best ways to help conjugate bilirubin. We want to make sure he's getting adequate sleep. The liver really needs the body to have good rest in order to do its job fully. And he, we don't want him skipping meals. Skipping meals is a really fast way to shoot that bilirubin up. And so we already can give him some direction as to how he can support his liver 
even while we are waiting for confirmation of is there liver damage or is there something serious going on. Now you'll notice that there's a little bit of gray clouding in his eyes right here. That gray clouding is another slur sign that we might want to chat with him about in his appointment. There's a lot of possible causes for this, but there's one that's really, really common. And unfortunately, we don't have time to go into that depth today. So that, did you see how we were able to combine sclera and iris to get a deeper understanding and to give us direction as to some things we wanted to do? that we could recommend and some things that we needed him to pursue with his doctor as well. If you could see that, give me a saw that in the comments box that you saw that. Fantastic, love that. Okay, let's talk about another one. This is a meander. So when we're talking about a meander, I want to imagine that you're flying in an airplane and you're looking down, probably over an agricultural area. And as you're flying over these farmers fields, you see little rivers winding their way through the fields, little rivers and streams, and they twist and turn. That's exactly what a meander looks like. So this is a 70 year old farmer. He is lean, he is fit. His farm is small, so he does much of the work by hand himself still. He throws bales, he mucks out stalls, he carries the feed for his small herds by hand in buckets. He does it by himself. He has no hired help. So pretty impressive dude, actually. So what would he like my help with? Well, that's always the first question in a consultation. But he came in because I met him in, other, in another circle, and he asked to be on my mailing list. So I sent out an email when I got a new camera, and I said, got a new camera. If you want to come in for 30 minutes, I'll... I'll talk about three markers in your eyes and give you three things you can work on right now in exchange for you letting me take your eye photos and use those in a teaching setting. And he was one of the first ones to say, pick me. So he came in. He did not have any actual health concerns that he wanted to work on. I mean, he's a pretty solid guy. You know, he's lean. He's strong. He's physically active. He's mentally very sharp. And so we needed to start looking at his eyes to figure out what we wanted to do. So we looked at his iris, we looked at his sclera, we looked at the size and shape of his pupil. And what really struck me is that he has lots of meanders that are very twisted. And this is just one side of one sclera. He's got lots of these. So we had a conversation about his health history about his diet and about his lifestyle. And we need that background for context because there may be many indicators and they have their own meaning, but they also modify each other. And if we don't have context, we don't know how these are going to modify each other. We don't have context. We can do a very basic cookie cutter analysis, which is pretty much useless because you're not hitting the points that your client needs you to hit. You're probably working on a lot of things that are subclinical because they don't feel the pain. They don't feel the urgency of that situation. They're just going to brush it off, right? So we always want context. Understanding the context lets us go much deeper and helps us to create the analysis to set up our recommendations. So again, his slurry have all of these meanders. And these suggest that they're is a very, very strong risk of congestion in his circulation and of, of building weakness in his blood vessel walls. So this fellow specifically has a, a really, he's a, a lovely person, great overall physically active lifestyle, but he also has a very high alcohol consumption. He drinks several servings of alcohol every day. So when we think this through, meanders suggest circulatory congestion. What causes congestion? Could be constricted blood vessels from the adrenal glands, maybe pumping out too much of the hormone that tightens blood vessels. Could be plaque buildup. Could be many other causes, but because of his alcohol consumption, I would like to see some labs from his doctors because his iris suggests there are inherent risks with his cholesterol and triglycerides, 
and with his blood sugars, right? Which means that he could be moving towards building plaque in the arteries and type two diabetes, even though he's lean, fit and active. So while we're waiting for him to go to his doctor and get those test results, because I, he didn't, this client gave me no direction. There was nothing he wanted help with. I'm shooting in the dark here, folks, and I'm not going to shoot in the dark. I won't play the game of, of, you know, when they say, tell me what's wrong by looking my eyes. I won't play that. That's a party game. That's not iridology. And so um, knowing that it could take up to a month for him to get to his doctor, get the test requisition, to get to a lab, get the results back, all that kind of stuff, we could start implementing changes right away. And so, you know, one of the things that I want to be paying attention to here is that this says, these indications say risk of cardiovascular issues and risk of blood sugar, triglyceride, cholesterol issues. And so um, when we see all of that, I know where I want to go. Now he's in his seventies, asking him to give up his alcohol is, it's not going to happen. Remember, he wasn't here because he wanted to get well. He was here because he was curious about what I could tell him. Very different perspectives, right? So we talked about this. And of course, he was poo-pooing it because he is physically active. Um, and I, so I said, you know, I hear what you're saying. I hear you saying you have no symptoms. And I totally agree with that. Unfortunately, the first symptom of a heart attack is usually a heart attack, right? You don't know what you, you didn't have any warning that that was coming. And so I said, if I, if this was my eyes, here's what I would do. I would make sure I was getting a lot of really good vegetables in my diet, preferably a huge serving of leaky greens every day. That would be the very first thing I would do. And I kept it really simple. And I said that alone can have a significant impact on how much plaque you put in your arteries and how your, your liver works for processing carbs for, to, for liver, uh, sorry, how your liver works for processing carbs that go into triglycerides and into cholesterol. And so it's interesting that, um, that, that you know, we just, we just had to find a starting point for him. Tammy says it's interesting because it aligns with TCM that the canthi right in here, represent the heart. Yes. Love that. Thanks for sharing that, Tammy. And Peggy says vascular and circulatory issues. Absolutely. That's exactly what we're looking at here. So can you imagine if you saw this in a client who was totally well, had no personal history of heart, but of course, one of your first questions that you always ask is, is there a personal or family history of anything running back three to four generations? And if they say lots of heart stuff, and you see this, and maybe your client's only 22 years old, it gives you fuel. And you can say, you've got a strong history of this, of these kinds of issues. Your body says it's building towards those kinds of issues. Would you like to work on preventing that? Or do you care about it? Some people don't care. They'll wait till they've got a problem. And some people are all about, well, I don't want the problems my parents had. So heck yeah, I want to know what you know. How do I prevent problems from building from this? Can I reverse this? And absolutely, if they're willing to work hard enough and long enough, these can be softened, which will teach us that the problem is reversing. Here's another client. Um, she was in her late 40s. She came in wanting help with allergies and depression. Now, both of those can have many physiological root causes. What I want you to notice here is this little blob right here in her sclera and this little blob in her opposite eye sclera. So this is her right eye. This is towards the outer. This is the, the uh, lateral side. This is her left eye. This is the lateral side. And so when we see this, this is called a pinguecula, and that is what the medical world calls it as well. We understand that this is a buildup of fat and protein and calcium on the surface of the eye. And it most often suggests that the liver is not processing things properly. 
And especially when it's yellow like this and it looks like chicken fat, that really adds fuel to the story that says liver doesn't want to balance things out properly. Now, penguecula don't dissolve or dissipate. We can't do anything to get rid of this. They can be surgically removed, but they typically grow back because when you have it removed surgically, you usually haven't done the, the internal chemistry work to balance things out. Right, so if someone has this removed surgically, I'm going to be really pushing them to do liver work ongoing. And that liver work can be as simple as diet, right? Getting the right foods on a daily basis. So it's interesting that these irides show us, the irides themselves show a strong liver predisposition. Now, in my training from TCM, I learned that depression comes from the liver as well. So we've got allergies and depression that both have a root in the liver. So we've got iris markers that are telling us that the liver wants to mess things up and we've got sclera markers. So we're going to recommend liver work. We're gonna start with diet, you know, and we're gonna just do all the right things diet wise that we can. We're gonna talk about lifestyle. Maybe we need to do some emotional work, especially because allergies and depression also can have an emotional root. So if you do emotional freedom technique or body talk or heart math or anything like that, maybe you've got some skills that can help your client release emotions that could be contributing not just to the development of the pinguecula, but to the imbalances that precede the development of the pinguecula and the imbalances that the freckles in this eye show. So I would do a bit of each of those things. I would start with, in a first appointment, I would start with one dietary change. And my favorite one for liver is often eat more leafy greens. And I get very specific about how much more is. Um, and I do that because I've had some people who thought a salad was a tiny piece of lettuce, a slice of tomato and a slice of cucumber. That is not a salad. That's not even an appetizer, right? I get them to do quantity here. Um, I would do a herbal suggestion. I would recommend a liver formula from my favorite herbal company. Now, this woman is very physically active. She's a personal trainer. So I might actually encourage her to get a little more rest. Make sure she's getting enough rest. And for her, her emotional side of things, I might add an aromatherapy formula or a flower essence formula. So when I've got iridology and sclerology working together, they help me to understand what the imbalance is and how to work with it. But it takes training, it takes practice, it takes feedback, it takes mentoring to get to where you can do this at a clinical level. And that's exactly why I offer the Dynamic Iridology Assessment System course for health professionals. One more marking that we want to look at the encapsulation. When we see a blood vessel that is forming a hook like this or like this, where it's actually formed a little loop, that can be a bigger loop, but this is a very tiny loop that suggests there may be an infection or a pocket of toxins that the body is trying to sequester until it can deal with it. And so with that, um, we want to be considering that with these, the problem may be so small that the client may not even be aware that they've got a little pocket of toxins or infection, or it may be big enough that they actually have a swollen gland or a cyst or an abscess. Okay. And so we need to, again, ask questions and see if this is an issue and if it's appropriate, if my client came in with immune concerns that they were always fighting something or they've been fighting something for many months, and I saw this, I would know what we were working with. I would know what we were working with. If they came in saying they wanted help with digestion, and I saw something like this, well, this isn't necessarily related to digestion, but I might try to find a digestive remedy that could also work on clearing out infection. Right, try to do double duty with a supplement. Can you see how understanding a marking fully and knowing what its placement means as an indication of where the problem resides in the body gives you the upper hand in knowing how to clear the problem out? 
you can learn, uh, you can lean on other modality training that you've got to select the best method for resolving issues. Now, Christina is, was saying on this previous eye that we had looked at here, um, it seems a bad, it seems a bad genetic choice for her to be a personal trainer. I think that's what you're meaning, but that's not the case. That's not the case because her personal training didn't put these freckles in her eye. This is again, what she had genetically. Personal training is um, for her, the only, my only concern with that is that she may not be fueling with high quality fuel when she's working out and she may not be getting enough rest. Alrighty, so now that you've heard all about sclerology, my name is Judith Cobb and I am a level three certified iridologist and a level three certified iridology instructor. Up until just a few minutes, ago, a few months ago, I was one of only three certified instructors. And now I am one of eight who are certified at the level three level. I've actually been an iridologist and an instructor for many more years than this, but IPA issues these badges to us every two years when we prove that we've kept our training up to date. I've been an iridologist and a practitioner since 1980, 81 is about when I started. I'm also a master herbalist and a natural nutrition clinical practitioner, and I maintain professional affiliations with all of these organizations because it is good to rub shoulders with professionals and it is good to keep our training up to date and current. Let's do a complete little case here. We're gonna do this pretty quick. We need to be finished in about 10 minutes. This is a gentleman, he's 79 years of age. He came to see me about a year ago for the first time with excess abdominal weight. That's what he wanted help with because he felt like his weight was affecting his knees and his ability to walk. Walking was very painful. He has a history of prostate cancer that was treated, treated with radiation and hormone therapy and he has congestive heart failure. He also with that has an irregular heartbeat, shortness of breath, reflux, and heartburn. When we met, he was on eight different medications, including an anti-anxiety medication to help him stay relax relaxed when his breathing becomes difficult. The irregular heartbeat, shortness of breath, and reflux and heartburn could also be related to a hiatal hernia. The doctor had not diagnosed that, but I referred him to an osteopath for an assessment on that because, gosh, you know, he had so many symptoms that he could have a hiatal hernia. Just a comment here from Peggy. I took many courses from Judith. She's hands on with her students, and I look forward to many more courses with her. Peggy, thank you so much. I do love my students. They are lovely people, wonderful people. So if, if you're somebody I could love and you've got a &P under your belt, let's talk. So. As I look at his eyes and as I look at his weight, my question is, is he developing insulin resistance? He's got lots of little things here that su suggest he might be. Does he have excess uric acid? And so we look in his sclera, he's got a gray patch here. We see that he has pinguecula as well, which you know is liver and carbs. He's got these things which suggest that there may be issues with carbs as well. He's got a corneal arcus. He's got a pigment at 18 minutes, which is liver pancreas. He's got some dirty yellow throughout his eyes. And his recent lab suggests that uric acid is a key player uh, or, no, he's got elevated uric acid, and there's some recent studies that suggest that uric acid can be a key player in insulin resistance and cardiovascular issues. So we brought his labs in with him, and his hemoglobin A1C was 7.7. It should be lower than 5.7, so he's, he's pretty high. He had low leukocytes. His lymphocytes were very low normal. His hematocrit was very low normal. His erythrocytes were low. His testosterone was low and he had elevated triglycerides. Now, if you don't know what those are, I strongly recommend that as a health professional, you need to have a book within arm's reach that explains lab tests to you. So you understand why doctors run these tests and what unusual results mean. 
So with this gentleman with his initial program, I suggested some hiatal hernia exercises for him to do while he was waiting to see his osteopath. He sent me an email just a week or so after starting it going, why hasn't my doctor ever taught me this? This is amazing. You know, the reflux is almost gone. Fantastic. We use some Barberin IR, which stands for Bar Barberin Insulin Resistant, because I suspect he was insulin resistant um, from what I see in his eyes and from where he was carrying his weight and from his diet as well. We use some glucosamine blend, a, a glucosamine formulation for his joints and for his gut health and omega-3. He was eating a lot of rice cakes with protein. So we want, sorry, he was eating a lot of rice cakes. We had to get rid of that. That's not gonna help him lose weight. We got him to replace that with protein and vegetables and we got him eating a lot more vegetables. So he was often doing eggs and a stir fry for breakfast, right? We also got him to start walking every day. Now his knees hurt. I couldn't suggest 30 minutes. So we started with, can you walk for five minutes at a time and do that a couple of times in a day? Within the course of a month, because of what we had started with his diet, his knees stopped hurting. He lost six pounds. He'd never lost six pounds before. And he was able to walk 30 minutes at a stretch. Do you think he was a happy camper or what? I also suggested sleeping on a wedge pillow um, because he was starting to have problems breathing, laying down. His doctor had never suggested to elevate his torso. And he did that. He said he is sleeping like a baby now. He sleeps so well. And again, he's losing inches and he's sleeping better. I would not have known to make those recommendations had I not seen all the various types of markers that he had in his eye that pointed me in those directions. You know, I certainly didn't want to do just a weight loss program with him because I knew that wasn't going to be the right answer. Yolanda's asking, what was that book? Hopefully there's a new version. It's Fishbox, a manual of laboratory and diagnostic tests. This is the 10th edition. I bet there's a new one out by now. Just look on, on any bookseller for uh, lab test manuals and they will have, I'm sure they will have some. So some health professionals want to learn iridology just because they do. And that's fantastic. But after they learn it and they find that it helps them in so many ways, um, they're going to find that it does so many things for them in their business, that it helps them assess their clients more quickly, that it helps them to be more accurate in their assessment, that it helps them to build faster and better rapport that it eliminates the need for an intake form. So for anyone who needs that title of that book, when we understand our clients on a deep level, we can create programs on the spot that will get them results quickly. And again, we're, we're able to create the program step by step because that's what our clients need. And that's exactly what I teach in dynamic iridology. I teach the markers, how they play off each other, how to use that in a clinical setting. We practice clinical setting with this. Being able to see the genetic predispositions in the irides and triangulate that or combine that with what the sclerae say is going to help you laser in on what needs to be done. It gives you a perspective that allows you to create programs that are doable and not overwhelming for the client. That and the fact that many health coaches spend too much time creating intricately detailed, difficult to follow programs that discourage their clients is why I teach dynamic iridology. I've spoken with so many health professionals that spend anywhere from four to 20 hours creating a protocol for a client. That's insane. It doesn't take that long when you know how to do this. Most iridology programs only teach markings. They don't teach correlations of sclerology or iridology, um, uh, sclerology to iridology, or sclerology to health risks. They don't teach how to integrate what you already know about nutrition or herbology or anything else for that matter with what the eyes teach you. They also don't include practicing on cases, feedback, and mentoring. I'm actually in the middle of a, an Instagram private conversation with someone who is doing 
a course with a well-known iridologist right now. It's all pre-recorded. She's not learning how to use it in a clinic. She's learning markers, but she is saying, I don't, I don't understand how to apply this. How sad is that to spend big bucks on a course from someone who really knows their stuff and to not have access to mentoring? Wow, that I, I see that a lot. I hear that a lot. When you're enrolled in a course that gives you not just the nuts and bolts, but the how to put it together and the long term mentoring, what you're going to get is you're going to be better at what you do. You're going to get faster results for your clients. You're going to get better results for your clients. You're going to have happier clients. That's going to lead to them doing word of mouth referrals for you. And you're going to do that without spending hours and hours creating protocols. Right. So, so important. If being able to assess your clients quickly and accurately, and if being able to craft your recommendations during your client sessions, if creating better and faster report, if getting rid of lengthy time sucking questionnaires, and if, uh, if having increased confidence in what you do sounds good, listen to what some of my grads have said. Now, you've already seen what Peggy said in the chat box. I didn't pay her to say that, by the way. Karen Choate, who's another grad, said this. I just returned from a regenerative detox course where iridology is implemented. Most people I talked with did not have anywhere near the same experience with their iridology education. They have no support, unanswered questions, and a lot of confusion. Mostly they finished their classes not knowing how to implement what they had learned. I feel so absolutely blessed to have been taught by you. I feel totally supported even still as I have graduated almost two years ago now. Now this was written about two years ago, so it's four years now. Uh, Karen is a CNHP who specializes in gut health and she still is in my world. I still support her and mentor her. Angela Hodges said this, and you can look this one up on the IIPA uh, website. What a fantastic course with a fantastic teacher that actually cares about success. I'm so happy I found her. And she goes on to say, I'm a registered dental hygienist, have been for 20 years, but have been studying naturopathic and homeopathic modalities on the side to help my own family. Now I want to open my own business using iridology to help others be healthier. I've already signed up with Judith for her next class, the class that comes after dynamic iridology, so I can brush up on body systems and learn herbology along with it. Fantastic. Kim, Kimberly Zadala says this. Um, oh, Peggy, jumping back to Peggy, she says, I could say more because I love Judith. Thank you, Peggy. You make me just touch my heart. Kimberly said this. If you're wondering which iridology course to take, you can stop looking. You found it. Judith Cobb is an excellent instructor with many years of experience. She is a caring and compassionate person who is dedicated to the field of iridology and her students. I personally practice both Eastern and Western philosophy, uh, physiology, medicine, and was very impressed with the layout of the program. She makes it easy for her students to balance work life and study. Kimberly has just actually completed her certification with IPA. So happy to have and blessed and privileged to have been her teacher and to still have her in my world so we can I can continue to mentor her. The dynamic iridology assessment system is for health professionals. It's the only online fully mentored taught by a live webinar course for nutritionists, herbalists, naturopaths, RNs, PTs, anybody who's got A and P under their belt and they want to work with clients one on one creating wellness programs, but they don't wanna to have to have unpaid overtime to create those programs. They want to stop overwhelming their programs or their clients with programs that are just too big and too hard. They wanna create programs that will help their clients to have success in baby steps, which will lead to long-term client retention. So important, so important. So if you have a college level a and course, with a grade over 80%. If you want to learn iridology and sclerology at a professional level, if you want to learn how markers play off each other, how they alter each other, if you wanna learn what questions the eyes want you to ask, if you want to learn how to create programs your clients can be more successful in implementing, if you want to be mentored for the long-term for years, not just when you're enrolled in the program, 
talk with me. Take this URL that you see on your screen and let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. tinyurl.com slash dynamic dash uh, iridology dash insight. I think I've got that somewhere where I can put that up on the screen on the chat box for just a moment. The course is delivered via 20 live two and a quarter hour long webinar classes. We meet once each week and we hold an extra two live mentoring sessions every month. Classes are recorded and so are the mentoring sessions so you can review or study on your own time. Oh, there's the mentoring sessions. These are group mentoring sessions. So you get to hear cases that other students are working on. If you want support with building your business and you need business ideas, the mentoring sessions take us beyond just iridology. If there is something that you need help with to get your, your iridology business going, that's where we do this. I don't know any other teacher that supports their students in building a business. The mentoring continues even after you complete your coursework. You receive as my gift in the course, a 225 page digital downloadable textbook and 45 pages of digital downloadable cheat sheets as well. Class sizes are limited. I will accept no more than 10 students per class because I wanna make sure that you have, get the attention you need, that all your questions get answered and that I have time to do the mentoring that you need to have done. The course includes mentoring for the certification exams that are offered through the International Iridology Practitioners Association. And so if you are, if this sounds like something you um, need, that you want, you want more information and you wanna chat with me, there we go. Um, oh, I put that in the wrong place, just a moment. I'm putting that link in the chat box right now. You can grab that link from the chat box and schedule a time to talk with me. This is not a high pressure sales call. It's an insight call. It's for us to ascertain if this course is good for you. Call spaces are limited and registration will be closing. The next go round starts actually on June 8th. And so registration will be closing a few days before then. You might think you've got a lot of time but we've already got registrants in the course. So again, talk with me. I pasted that link into the chat box. Use it to schedule a time when we can talk. Let's talk about the course. And um, so Shannon, you're asking, can I re repeat about registration? Are you looking for the registration link or are you looking for the day? Yes, there you go, on the screen for you. Starts on June 8th, class time will be Depending on your time zone, if you are overseas, use Calgary, Alberta as your reference point in your international clock. And you can then see what time this would be. Now, remember, every class session is recorded. If you live in a place on the face of this earth where you cannot attend classes live, and I've had several students do this, particularly European students, where they've completed the course very successfully by listening to the recordings afterwards and joining us in the mentoring sessions when they could. We also have a private social media group where they can post questions, where you can post questions if you're a student or a graduate and get extra mentoring. So there you go, there's the basics. Thank you so much for being with me. I must run, I'm up to teach in two minutes, can't be late for my, my paying students either. Thank you for being with me. I am looking forward to speaking with you on a call. Let's see if this is a good fit for you. Take good care, we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.